Hey, Steph. Um, given how you guys have seen how Clay's been really trying hard but hasn't been able to get some of his shots to fall, how nice was it for him to come up with that huge game winner tonight? It was big for a lot of reasons for me. You know, us to get over the hump and get this dub. He made another mid-ranger when the game was tied a couple minutes earlier. So for him, it's just good. There's always high confidence he's going to impact the game, shooting the basketball. If as long as he's taking good shots and the ball's moving, um, we like the law of averages with him for sure. And you know, it was a huge, huge shot. He seemed in rhythm. And once he caught the ball, knew what he was trying to do. And big, big, big shot for us, for him. Um, it's a weird game in between two road trips. So our energy was kind of all over the place. And the, you know, for him to seal it, for, you know, for us was huge. Steph, over here. So far, the uh, the non-Steph minutes have been in pretty good hands. It seems. Does that make it easier for you in a way? I mean, winning any part of the game is great for me, great for the whole team, for sure. So, you know, the the sample size um, as we go through the year with the different lineups that we throw out there, we've talked about a lot. CP's helped us so much in terms of organizing us, uh, and that, especially in that second unit, and gives us not only are they, I talked about they, um, not only they're protecting leads, like they're building on it. And uh, usually our starting lineup is kind of the, the showpiece on plus minus and all that. And I think we're a little behind pace. And they've done a great job of, uh, especially on the road, like those have been huge kind of momentum killers for us in the past. And, you know, they've been doing a, an amazing job. I know we've, we've talked about CP a lot and the depth <coughs> of this team, but as those moves were being made, Sarich, and even the draft choices. Did you see or did you talk to Dunleavy or the front house like, that, that there was a theme here, that there was something they were trying to get to with all those guys? Um, I mean, there was a check-in before the trade, but other than that, nobody needs to hold his hand doing his job. It's just, you know, he has he passed the baton from Bob, who did an, you know, an amazing job for over a decade, and you know, we've had some kind of ups and downs with, with that over the years with developing guys and, you know, bringing the right combination of, of vets and young guys in. And, you know, I think we talked about it at the beginning of the – or at the end of the summer, beginning of training camp, like the pieces kind of, you know, on paper look like they fit a little better and get in the depth and the, the, uh, the experience that we have. There's a nice blend of everything. And – you know, we have you know a long season left to continue to prove it and, and go out and execute, but it, you can tell there's there's a big difference uh, just with the way that we're playing right now. Steph, what is the s secret recipe to being able to navigate the age gap? Like, what is the actual thing that happens in the locker room that really helps? Is it that the young guys just really want to learn from you guys or is it that you guys just really want to teach the young guys why is it that you guys are meshing so well with the age gap of the younger guys and then the older guys well right now i'm trying to make sure that i get it right the 10 11 guys that are in the rotation there's only two young guys that are playing um and so it's newer. yeah I mean, the, the newer guys like CP and Dario, they've been around the block. They understand how to play. They've played meaningful games throughout their careers. They have a – obviously, CP, for sure, uh, he's a Hall of Famer. So there's not much teaching going on. It's just kind of like a conversation, communication, and understanding how we're trying to go out and execute and play. And then, you know, you have J.K. and, and Moses who, you know, are in their uh, third year and trying to take that next step. And they have a very specific role. Um, it doesn't demean their value. It's just a very specific way that they can impact the game uh, on both ends of the floor. So, you know, for us vets, it's like you want to be proactive in coaching and, and advising and being a, a presence for them. They ask questions and all that along the way. We obviously have to continue to worry about, you know, ourselves and our performance, which is a nice balance there. but. None of it have. None, we're not going to win anything unless we have that combination show itself night in, night out. And uh, you know, five games in, it's a good start. 
Steph, has, has the addition of Dario been as seamless as it appears from, you know, from the outside, I guess? I mean, he just seems to step on the court and be a playmaker on, on both sides. And if his shot isn't falling, he said, I'll just, you know, not worry about it. And Chris will continue, CP3 will continue to, f to find me. It's great that they've played together before, so they have a good communication and chemistry. Um, I talked, I think like we were playing pickup before training camp, and somebody swung it to him in the corner, and I was up the floor on the wing, and he didn't even hesitate and did a DHO with me, and I didn't have to say anything. It was, it was like a, just a high basketball, high IQ basketball play, and you can tell he's been playing professionally for a long, long time, and is very skilled and you know when he's making shots it's it's a huge bonus for us. He it was a huge um difference tonight the way they were defending us and, and you know how what they were trying to take away. So him being able to space gave us some good looks and he knocked down some big shots. He's been playing some bigger guys at the five and trying to hold it down for us down there in the paint. So he's he's just a true professional. Um he's one of the quieter ones in our in our group, but he's the one that he just shows up, does his job, and it looks like he's having fun. I know it sounds silly to say, you know, what makes Chris so good at having a knack for finding people? You know, he's been doing it for decades, but what is it that he just knows where his teammates are going to be? How, how does he do it? I mean, you have to ask him. It's, 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 we've been playing against it for years. Um, nobody's ever going to, like, speed him up or rush him. Even 19 years in, he's still got a knack for it's just overall court vision. It's, it's insane. Um, even if at different speed, like it, he just, like you said, he finds guys at the right time. And I think he has a sense of pride in doing that. And that's how he knows he can impact the game. Oh, hi, Stan from uh, China Migo. Uh, tonight they double a lot. But on the last 40 seconds, we were down by one. You make a quick uh, ISO, and then we scored. Is that a uh, part of a plan, or you just see there no bother, no no double? You just go score it. That was one time I've gotten space in the middle of the floor. They were trapping all over the place. We kind of expected that for most of the game. And in, in that scenario, we're down one. I think it was like 40-ish seconds when we got the ball. I kind of had the bonus of it being like a two for one situation where if I could get a good shot quick, then make or miss, you know, we're still in the game. Thankfully, it went in. You know, it's a bonus. It's a, a banker from the top of the key, and, you know, that momentum kind of shifted, but we obviously had one, you know, last possession to, to seal the game, and Clay knocks it down. So everything kind of worked out in terms of managing the clock. In that in that scenario, and so that we had you know those two possessions to their one, and you know thankfully two shots went in. Yeah. Steph, I got um, two questions for you. Uh, I forgot one of them, but the second, <laughs> um, I think I forgot two. <laughs> I make you nervous. I know it's okay. I make you uh, nervous. Uh, so Draymond said the. Uh, the chemistry was uh, the opposite of good last year. Do you, and it's better now, was that, did you do anything to kind of set the tone for that, to, to calculate it, or is it just a byproduct of having a bunch of old guys? <laughs> wow. Was he, uh, oh, I think he also said, or tried to define us as not the opposite of young, but somewhere in between, just a nice play on words. It, I understand the vibe of how last year went. I know it, you could waste a lot of breath talking about everything that happened last year, but you know the way that the season ended and what happened over the summer. Um, I think that the times that we got to spend together as a group, you know, the two or three times we all got together were, were huge. So that there was a, you could kind of get the elephants out the room of. You go CP joining our team, and like you said, some of the other vets that we had uh, coming in. You know, Corey, Dara didn't get to go to much because he was playing overseas, but um, you know, GP back in the fold starting the year, and we just played and hung out all, on and off the court, and it helped to have some familiarity, understand you know everybody's personalities and presence, and you know motivation going into the year. 
And I think it's it's translated to some early success for sure because even though we're not playing perfect basketball, you know, there's nice cohesion and chemistry and trust amongst each other that whoever's out there uh, is is going to you know, take advantage of that, that, that time they're on the court, knowing that there's so many options that coach can go to, so many different lineups. And without that trust, uh, you know, there can be some – bitterness that could creep up based on who's the f finishing five and all that type of stuff. And we know it's going to change from game to game and everybody's going to get an opportunity. And we have to, you know, believe in that throughout the course of the year. So us getting together over the summer to build that trust was huge. I remember my second question. How would Great you rate, job. <laughs> how would you rate Clay's uh, post shot celebration or, or lack thereof? I know if it was you, it would have been different, but for Clay. Draymond caught him. That's what he was, he was ready to do something crazy, but Draymond bear hugged him. Uh, he was like backed up into him. So uh, it was, it was fun. And honestly, for me, like just watching it, I was in the corner when I kind of cut through, he makes a shot, I look up, it's point two. So you have a good feeling that it's over. I've actually seen the highlight and it is cool, like however many years later we're still, you know, the guys are still doing it and those moments where, you know, Clay hits a huge shot, first person gets the bear hug of his grandma, like there's some poetry in that. So it's kinda cool how it's I, I don't ever take those moments for granted, knowing how long we've been doing this. Steph, tonight you became the first player in NBA history to hit a three in 250 straight regular season games. You could say that every game, though. Well, I know. Well, yeah, 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 it's true. I, I'm encouraging you to do that. Every okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, how, how aware are you of that? a record like that? Is Raymond in your ear saying, got to get another one, got to get another one, or just like... I was, and actually, now I have to tell you that you've hit a three in every game. So. <laughs> I haven't been thinking about it much. I know the streak is still going, which is cool, but... You don't really think about it too much because this is how I play. And then you were just talking about the three of you guys. It was you, Draymond, and Clay. How much of that is just built over time? Like, you know, you cut, Clay comes around. Like, how much of that is just you guys have been together for so long? Again, it's just trust. Like, I was, I, I was trapped at the half court, got out of my hands. Draymond surveying the court. I cut through. I'm not open. CP was spaced. Uh, who, who else was on the court? Was it Wiggs? Oh, GP was out there, yeah. So um, he's in, in the dunker and Clay's on the other wing, and you just – somebody's going to get open because as long as we don't turn it over, we usually get a good shot. I know we, I turned it over a lot tonight, but in that type of moment, there was a kind of a calmness of just – you know, I sometimes might like try to force a shot there, but you see how the defense play playing you, get rid of it. Clay cuts at the right time down the middle. We got trust in that shot too, so everything kind of worked out beautifully, to, considering how they defended us. Another three-point uh, numbers question: uh, How much do you think at all about getting 402 threes again, or maybe uh, more than that? Do you think it's possible? Do you th is it on your mind at all? Um, no, nah, not it wasn't on my mind. I think it's possible for sure. It's just a matter of what since uh, what year is that? Twenty sixteen. Yeah, I've had a lot of injuries and stuff that just kill your games played. So it's not really a conversation at that point. But I know if I played seventy plus, there's you know a good shot at it. Uh, before I did 400, I didn't think it was possible, and I think I said that that whole year, and then it ended up happening. So, uh, yeah, believe it's possible for sure. You're averaging a little bit more than you did last that that time, but you started off as super fast that season too. Yeah, long way to go. I'm gonna keep shooting though. You know that. Cool. That it. Oh, yeah. Thank you.